Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Waking up for a nice, early, beautiful morning over here in Helsinki, Finland. Want to be wishing well, want to be wishing the best, the best. And because it is a Sunday, we're going to be talking about all of the long term analysis ideas. So, plenty of new things to talk about in this video, as actually, in, even in the lower time frames, plenty of, uh, plenty of activity in the overnight hours. So, let's waste no more time getting a live scene. And as always, wishing the best, the best, the happiest of the happiest whatever you want in your good old cryptocurrency life. I want that for you right here, right now, as long as it's good. Anyways, <laughs> you never know who's listening, Michael Jackson. Um, no, terrible joke to make. Anyways, uh, as far as I'm concerned, now, on the daily total time frame, as long as Bitcoin is above this Cyan 89 exponential moving average right here, I do not want to be necessarily bearish. Of course, this was taken out, unfortunately, on the weekend on Saturday, which for me presents a massive problem because when I see momentous price action go, I want to see it usually done during the weekday because moves that happen on a weekend typically get faded in the opposite direction as usually during the weekend. It's a lot easier to perform a lot of hunts, force people out of their positions, you know, you know, basically just run stops essentially. And we've seen that before actually not too long ago, about two weeks ago here, uh, 23rd of February. This was actually a Saturday. Then the next day on Sunday, major, major, massive Darth Maul dildo just being thrown down into the court. And of course, could that be potential for what we're looking at right here right now on this Sunday as well? Well, potentially, but um, when, with it, when it comes down to it, and what I want to be very, 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 very blatant about in a video like this is that I am monitoring where spot prices are in relation to when CME opens, which will be at 7 p.m. Eastern time tonight. So if spot prices are trading above this 3,900 level, that would be a more bullish indication to me because... I do believe that the CME charts get the price action better because they don't trade on the weekends. And in fact, when we go over here to the CME charts, you will very, very quickly notice that it looks nothing like, well, not nothing like the spot charts, but we don't have those major runs because when were those, when were those major stop runs done, those major hunts run, uh, run, uh, major hunts done on the weekend. We actually had one right over here. Then of course, right over here. And then right now we're, we're actually in the middle of one. In fact, you'll notice on CMEs, it's only been making lower highs. Whereas on spot, we do have a slightly higher high in the more immediate section so looking at this right here we actually can make a nice uh, trend line going all the way back from late november of the past year getting one two three four five potentially six highs so what i'm really curious to see here is if cme when cme opens does CME open above this resistance trend line? Because if it does, that's typically a good sign for an actual breakout. If it, if it does open below or crashes back below, which would be about 3,900 now, I would immediately become extremely bearish for a move down to, you know, like, I mean, very, 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 very likely 3,800 extremely quickly. But uh, overall, I'd be looking for a move down to about 3,600, 3,650. So that is the great importance of what's going on right now. And of course, uh, with that said, I'll go down, I'll go into the lower time frames over here because yes, we actually did take out that 3930 area. Um, again, albeit it was on a weekend when traditional markets were kind of down. Um, you know, CMEs were not trading, GBTC was not trading. So to me, that is, you know, it presents some problems. We do have a lot of uh, lower time frame, or sorry, medium time frame also is still switching around. I think this is your four hour Stokes still going down, eight hour Stokes, uh, losing momentum up here, 10 hour Stokes, going to be losing momentum as well, 12 hour. Same sort of thing, and daily actually, same sort of thing. So, to me, all those time frames hold a lot of weight. But as long as Bitcoin holds above the Cyan 89 exponential on the daily, which is currently at 3930, that critical 3930 area that we've been speaking about, I do respect this as likely to continue onwards and upwards. But the second that Bitcoin actually breaks below 3930 and starts closing some higher level dollars below there, especially if it were if it were a daily, I would be looking for I wouldn't necessarily get uh, extremely bearish off that. Uh, I don't get I don't get extremely bearish until, you know, 3850 breaks 30 and especially 3800. If 3800 break, breaks and yes, I'd be looking for a move down to the overall uh, bottom side of the range at around 3400. Um, but in this kind of uh, thick area right here, it's we have a lot of chew through on both ways. Anyways, going over here to the 12 hour, you will notice that the 12 hour 200 exponential actually did stop the top of this run so far. In fact, looking very reminiscent of the prior high uh, in again, late February 24th right here, where we had you know a couple of dildos close, or uh, uh, one dildo close above, but then immediately shoved right back down as what is now turning out to be just a, looks like a massive consolidation right here. Look at the volume signature and then look at the price structure. The price structure is quite ugly and it's very messy, but the volume signature is what tells me that this is likely consolidation. So 
So am I wrong about thinking that Bitcoin was going to have a nice move after it broke out at 3930? Well, I mean, it did have a nice move all the way about you know, a little bit more than $100 higher than that. Does it get more continuation from this area or not? Well, I think that that idea gets a little bit more shuffled to the wayside. And why do I say that? Well, actually, because of this reaction right here, I do consider this more more than likely consolidation. So until Bitcoin actually gets back above 4,000, which is where the 200 exponential on the 12-hour delta time frame is, is is around right now, that's that would be my disposition. Especially because it is the weekend time, I should I should certainly be a lot more hesitant with declaring something an actual breakout rather than a potential fake out, which were which is I would not consider it a potential fake out as long as we're above. 3930. So I'll put it that way. I would give the I, I would put the ball in the bull's court as long as we're above 3930. But the second that it gets taken out, it's second where you know the high, the house of cards starts to look a lot different. Anyways, I do want to bring up a lot of things um, with this area, actually 4,000, which I completely missed and uh, bad on me. But basically, one of the biggest ones that I've been completely neglecting is the Trollinger Bands on the weekly, which I haven't been monitoring all that much. But the Trollinger Bands on the weekly actually perfectly getting that last move. This mid skid, this mid like skid mark uh, colored moving average is a 20 cent moving average. That's all it is. And actually, that's exactly where we kind of wicked up to um, yesterday about 40 40 ish area now if you're not familiar with trollinger bands i'm not you know i'm not a huge fan of trollinger bands i think that there's much better ways to do it but they 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 they, they are pretty good at getting the overall trend um in fact you will notice and if you are familiar with this or if you're in the technical analysis program which i should actually jesus christ i forgot to talk about that um <laughs> but if um you know if, if you're in that program we do have a video which basically explains that usually the idea is that once he's been away from the tr from uh, from the medium troll in Japan for a very long time, you'll come back and retest it, which is what we're doing right now. And if that rejects, that would actually imply another move back down to the low side of the range. So that would you know that would be 3,400. By the same token, if we actually do take it out to the upside, it's not until we both open and close a weekly dildo above this median Trollinger band where it would incite, likely incite a test to the upside or sorry the the top band, which will be you know collapsing down. Um, but that top land is actually currently right around 5,900. So if we were to actually start taking this out, that would, you know, look a little bit different. Now, do I put the most weight on trolling bounds? No, I do not. Um, and of course we need to both open and close a weekly total above it first. For now, it actually looks more like a rejection than anything on the weekly. And again, the weekly is, I, I think the, the weekly is quite clear with this all being a consolidation. Again, the weekly time frame looks a very corrective, uh, very corrective price structure and the volume signature is that of consolidation. So as long as we're kind of being governed by this 20 some moon average, uh, I would be looking at I would be looking at that to potentially, you know, potentially manage trades off of. Um, again, not my main way of doing things, but let's go over here to the exponentials and put these guys on. We actually do see some good confluences uh, between this. We actually see the 20 exponential moving average higher than the 20 some moving average, which is which would imply more upwards pressure. It would imply that as the exponential is more, you know, is more reactive to recent price actions. So that would mean that, uh, you know, if it's higher, then that means that price actions, you know, putting putting more pressure, which I would agree with. The question is, which, you know, which one do we respect? Because the 200 exponential is coming in right around where we, we kind of wicked up to yesterday as well. You know, a few bucks higher. When we're looking at a weekly, fit within $50 range is completely fine. And uh, this one's coming in around 4150 uh, Sorry, not 4150 4100 And yesterday's high, obviously, 4040 Um so again, just another major thing right here, because from my perspective on a medium time frame, you know, uh, look, I am, you know, I, I'm really not willing to consider that the overall bearish market is over until we actually both, oh, at, at the very least, at the very fucking least, both open and close a weekly total above this purple 200 exponential moving average right here. So that's again, 4,100. Bitcoin's got a lot of work to do to, to actually, uh, to actually initiate it. Of course, you know, from the from this perspective, you could also just get the macro time frames as well. If you're a longer term investor, which I'm, you know, which I, I typically don't, you know, I, that's not my perspective. I'm a, I'm a short term time day trader for the most part. Uh, but if you are a long term trader or sorry, a long term investor, whatever you want to call it, this is not financial advisor, not financial advisor. But what I can say is that uh, I'd pay no more attention to anything outside of the 200 exponential or 200 simple moving average, the pink and the purple right here. If we break the pink moving average to the downside, the 200 simple at 3400, I'd become immediately bearish 
for move down to mid 2000s. If we break the the purple 200 exponential move and average to the upside, meaning both open and close above it, I'd actually be looking for a pretty extended run into the mid 4000s, maybe even late 4000s. Um, and as we saw in the troll underbounds, that would actually probably have confluences with you know perhaps even initiating higher runs. Um, but again, like I said, uh, with weekend bullshit, I have to be very, 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 very careful because, you know, yes, again, for all intents and purposes, we technically did break out, but because it was done on a weekend, I become very defensive, uh, so far our four hour time frame just, uh, bouncing off of the 21 exponentials. You can see getting all the way down to 39, 26. So basically defending that 39, 30 ish area. Um, first bounce is decent, you know, bouncing about 25 bucks off there, which is now like a decent play. Um, I am still a little bit of very, 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 very small long in my main account. Um, but like I said, I do not, you know, the, I'm, I, I don't, put on big positions counter trends. So it's a very, 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 very small position to be, uh, to be quite clear. And if we do start, if we do start closing deltas below 3930, I will take it off and probably open a short. Uh, if we take out 3930, I will very likely open a short. Does it, you know, does it end up being a scalp all the way down to maybe, you know, 3870? Uh, I think that would be pretty likely. The question is, do we actually break 3800 on that? as 3800 is going to be the next big level uh, that I need to see broken on like a lower time frame. But for, for, but for higher time frames, a little bit different. I just need to see uh, about, mm, about 3850. I think that that would do it for me. Anyways, for right now, as you can see, we are just bouncing off of the Cyan 89. So as long as that's defended, I want to be very clear about this. I don't want to be bearish. As long as that's defended, even though, yes, there are things in the lower time frame suggesting that we do, you know, there, uh, there is pressure down right now. I want to be respectful of this move until told otherwise, um, even if it is on the weekend. But remember, it's really going to come down to the CMEs. You know, where do the CMEs, uh, where do they open today? Do we open up above that resistance and maintain the resistance or and, and test the resistance or as, as support? at 3,900, that would be a phenomenally good sign. If that happens, I'd be looking for a move to about 4,200. Um, but uh, if that does not happen, well, by CME standards, I'd actually get incredibly bearish just based off this, as uh, this would just look like another rejection right here. Um, support technically around, you know, right below 3,800, but uh, more likely around 3,600 is what I'd be looking at. Anyways, um, okay, so we spoke about that. Let's actually throw the troll hundred bands on the daily while we're here, which I thought was kind of interesting because they are really pinching right now. Um, sorry, this is obviously CMEs, so let's go over to yeah, let's go over to spot. Yeah, um, on CMEs they're pinching, but on of course on uh, on 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 what's called on spot on Bit Mexico, we're actually poking ahead above the top troll hundred band, which typically does happen during trending moves. But again, because it is on a weekend, it makes it so fucking difficult. Remember the last time that we actually had this go on on the weekend, right? here this is typically what you get when you're seeing like a pretty strong momentous move which this th this was actually a different setup overall because we'd been pushing it for a little bit of time right now we're just we're on our first first push and as long as we kind of are maintaining closing uh daily doubles outside of the top trollinger band that would be a nice uh, uh that would be a nice indication as well which is currently coming around 39.71 so bitcoin still has a little bit of work to do if it wants to maintain that um but yeah other than that you know, is from um, from from, uh, from the Trollinger band perspective. Sorry, I am <laughs> I'm studying so so much. I apologize. Uh, from from the Trollinger band perspective, though, it's not until we you know break 3850, which I'd agree um, for being bearish and be looking at a move down to about uh, 3700, and then uh, I'd imagine 3650 after that uh, would be extremely likely. But again, this is uh, we are. <sighs> it's, the fucking weekend just destroys anything. Anyways, because I keep on forgetting to talk about it, my God, <laughs> let's get on over here to, um, let's get on over here to the programs, which are all on sale for the rest of the month with the code. Let me get this on over here. I completely forgot to talk about this, guys. I do pause about that. Um, with the code year 20 in all capitals, Y E A R all capitals. And then the number is two zero that goes for every one of my programs and all payment plans going out even to, I believe I've all the way up to a 10 month payment plan. And <clears throat> that goes for the trade for like professional program, which is the all encompassing technical analysis program that doesn't just cover technical analysis, but also strategies. And of course, managing positions, managing risk, understanding underlying market dynamics, and then, and then plenty of bonus modules, plus access to a couple of proprietary indicators and access to very important the hidden discord community which was not first included when I first uh, made this program uh, I actually didn't have that but I added it later you know uh, because people were asking for it and 
it's been one of the biggest points of the program to get the people of the program into a specific channel to 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 bounce ideas off of each other we've come up with incredibly incredibly great things so this group right here is very important to me which is why i always remind people hey if you're thinking about investing in any one of these programs understand that these programs are designed for someone who wants to do this in a very serious manner typically as a living not someone who's just trying to dabble you know do it as a hobby which is completely fine i'm not here to judge anyone my point is though is that it would be complete overkill you don't need to invest all this money into a program like this you can just take advantage of my free resources please do that's what they're there for it's all on youtube it's all on the um all, on the playlist you know uh, new to technical analysis and then technical indicators and strategies and then I, I even have an introduction to options uh, series now with actually one of the videos from the options program which by the way is the one right there at uh, master your options um, which is, you know, essentially similar to the technical analysis program, but with regards to options. And then we have the jewel indicators below there, which is just access to the jewel indicators. Um, nothing more, nothing less. Uh, the options program also does come with the hidden discord community access as well. And uh, let's get on over into it right now. So again, I always want to remind people, please, I'm going to, I trust you to make the right decision if, you know, if that sounds like you or not. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, I'll, I'll get back onto the back onto the analysis right now because that's just annoying to talk about. I'm sure. Anyways, uh, let's go back and put on the exponentials and simples. And while we're here, let's go look at the higher time frames. So we looked at daily also. It is daily R size not really telling us all that much. Um, I would I would consider this neither bullish nor bearish in either way. Uh, slightly a little bit more positive setup. Daily jewel did speaking of the jewel actually you could consider this a little bit of a signal that we got a few days ago, fifteenth uh, of March, fourteenth of March right here, yeah, fourteenth of March right here, um, but not a perfect signal. Again, if you have access to the jewel, that's that's not the kind of signal I want to take. Uh, two day uh, time frame right here will be very interesting again tonight because what I won't be awake for this, but. What's likely going to happen is you're probably going to see some fireworks go down near the close of tonight at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time as both bulls and bears defend these positions as bears are going to want to, you know, initiate the trap by going back below about 3930 or especially 3900 for CMEs and uh, bulls will want to maintain that area, which will lead on over to confluences with um, with actually crossing the two day stokes back to the upside, which I really don't like trading against. These things have been pretty damn good for the past year. Each and every time that they've actually crossed down, those have been major massive dumps. I mean, this was your dump from 20,000 to to 10,000. Uh, this was your dump from uh, from 12,000 to 6,000. This was your dump from 10,000 to 6,000. This was your dump from 8,400 to 6,000. And then once again, we've crossed down. And as long as we're down, I would, you know, I, I would certainly be on the more bearish side. Uh, three day right here. Three days actually crossing up, and that will be closing tonight at, at or sorry, no, it will not be closing tonight. It, we just got a new one. I apologize about that. I apologize about that. So yes, three day stokes are actually snaking around right now. So again, similar thing right here. But the thing is with the three-day Stokes is that if we can make a trend line going all the way back from quite literally middle of December in 2017 when Bitcoin was around $20,000, you'll notice that this trend line has actually got gathered all of the major tops of the past over a year. Again, this top at 20,000, this top at 8,400, this top at, uh, sorry, this top at was at 10,000, this top at 8,400. And then once again, we hit this trend line and bounced off of it. If we were to actually confirm, because this is unconfirmed that we've actually crossed a three-day Stokes back up, but if we were to confirm it, that to me would be a very strong reaction and probably incite an actual breakage of this trend line. But of course, uh, uh, as we just saw, uh, this is a fresh one. So we got another three days ago, which is a fucking eternity in in, uh, in Bitcoin land. There is, uh, it's it, it makes no sense to try to, um, you know, force a direction on this either which way, because right now it's, it's not going to take too much of a big move. It's going to take about a $50 move either which way to fully confirm either down or up. Uh, if it is to the upside, if we get back uh, back above 4000 I think it would be pretty damn safe to say that it probably is going to break it. But if uh, if we were to break out uh, below 3930 3900 then yes, I would be looking for this cross back down, respect this, and <laughs> continue the trend back to the back to the bottom side of the range. Anyways, I'll uh, take this off right now. And let's see, what do we have on the three-day RSI? Uh, Three-day RSI not telling us too much either. Um, getting out of the bearish control zone for the first time in a while, maintaining above there. But as you can see, we have had resistance in this area. 
we certainly have had resistance anywhere around the 50 marker, you know, it, it, in this zone right here, that's been actually getting all the tops again of the last over year, uh, going all the way back to, you know, beginning of 2018, we've really, really struggled along this, uh, along this area. So as long as Bitcoin's below it, it is still pressure on from the higher timeframes. But like I said, lower timeframes on a weekend, you know, do you want to argue with that? I mean, it's not too healthy for your account. Um, we do see a very powerful uh, bullish engulfing dildo actually being set in stone on the three-day as well, which is uh, actually quite impressive. Oh, by the way, forgot on the two-day. So far, the two-day the two-day fifty has uh, stifled the price action as well, coming in where coming around that four thousand ish level. So we have the twelve-hour two hundred exponential, and we have the two-day fifty exponential, which well, it would make sense, right? Because they're both going to be coming in at the same level. Um, but more importantly. You know, that I would say is our more preliminary resistance as long as we're closing, you know, as, as, as long as we're not both opening and closing those, you know, those time frames dildos above that area, then this would be the right interpretation as looking at this as the next major resistance um, to kind of fuck around with. But like I said, even if this is major resistance, as long as Bitcoin maintains above 3930. I would be overall respectful of the upside. So I hope that these ideas are very clear. I know they can get very convoluted, and I do pause about that, but I know that the that the type of person tuning into content like this understands these sorts of intricacies in in understanding that it's essentially not black or white thinking. I mean, trading can't be that way. It's just we're just finding statistical setups essentially at the end of the day. Um, and right now things are quite tight. Um, and I really, really hesitate making a big decision before CMEs are open. Um, if I can get confirmation on those, that's going to make a lot more sense. Anyways, while we are here, you know, I, I want to remind, um, I, I want to remind myself as well as you, what's at stake at this area, which is again an area of great resistance. Which yes, we're technically we're technically above right now, but look at the monthly 50 exponential, this green moving average right here, which was broken for the first time in Bitcoin's history in December of 2018. And ever since then, we were, we've been respected the 50 exponential right around 3,900, actually 3,910 now um, as, uh, no, 3,900 um, as resistance. So to me, we did not actually close above that on Friday when CME is closed. So it's still a little bit ambiguous. Now, of course, this needs to be initiated on a monthly total time frame, but I would... I would feel very comfortable with saying that if we took out the high of the prior month's dildo, very, 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 very likely that we're going to make our way into the into the late four thousands. Forty five hundred becomes extremely likely that at that point. Um, should I mean even you know even forty seven uh, would certainly be on the table of possibilities. Uh, but for now, I do want to remind myself that there is resistance in this area, and while we are above it on a weekend. It is weekend, so uh, so so that's coming in right there. Let's go over to the two-week total time frame. Which the two-week total time frame, we see the red ten simple moon average right around that thirty-nine hundred level as well. Actually, a few ticks above, and this one has been very good at holding price action back for the past overall year. Um, sorry, more than a year, going all the way back here to late January of twenty eighteen. You can see that each and every time that we've actually gotten up to the red ten simple on the two-week total time frame, that has been, you know, that uh, that has been the resistance, so to speak. And where's that coming in around 3905? And guess when that one closes today? This is a two-week total time frame. Well, tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So if we close today above 3905, does that mean that it's officially broken for the 10 simple? Actually, no. As you can see right here, we did close above it one time before. You need to both open and close above it. But it would be it it would be probably enough for me to say we're probably gonna we're probably gonna test 4350 at that point. Test the 89 right here. Uh, uh, but however. If Bitcoin were to end today below 3,900, I would immediately get bearish just based off this because of this price action having a very corrective nature. The volume signature, again, can, that of consolidation. While these two moving averages approach each other, the yellow 21 and the green 55, which, sorry, they haven't approached. They've actually crossed. And I would imagine that if we were to end, as long as we are respecting that 10 simple as resistance, they will gain divergence away from each other. And that will just strengthen the... That'll just strengthen the bottom algorithm, algorithmic selling to the downside, which, well, will probably resolve this consolidation to the downside, as we can see on the two-week, as we can see on the weekly, sorry, as we can see on the monthly. And if we go back to the weekly, uh, let me remind you that the same area is, is denoted by the 20 simple moon average on the weekly, on the Trollinger balance right here, which currently we've actually found resistance upon, which, like I said, is, is actually coming in significantly higher at around 40, uh, 4080. But you can see a nice zone forming between 4080 and 39, uh, 3900. 
Um, but like I said, for right now, you know, ball is in the bull's court. Ball's in the bull's court as long as Bitcoin is above 3930, 3900. I would view it that way from the shorter time frame perspective. Of course, from the macro time frame perspective, very little has changed because, you know, we haven't fully confirmed above on the two week. We haven't fully confirmed above on the monthly and, and, and of course, on the weekly as well, as we're seeing right here. Um, so again, I, I know that this is getting very convoluted, but I hope that the difference between short term, medium term and long term outlooks are, uh, are, are quite clear. Anyways, let's go on to this conversation now. Um, what would change around or perhaps, you know what, let's actually talk about now. Let's let, let's get into this conversation because we have plenty of news shit to talk about. Uh, what would change my, my around my overall view on Bitcoin? You know, how would I not get uh, at what when would at, at what point would I say that the macro time frames are really changing? Well, as we said before, if we can open and close a weekly total above the probable 200 exponential on the weekly at around 4100, that would be a great that that would be a, a massive change of behavior, and I would be looking for a, a move probably into the deep 4000s at that point. Um, but would that signify that the bear market is officially over by technical analysis stand, uh, standards? No, it wouldn't. Um, the, what I put a lot more weight on is going over here to the monthly. And if we could both, and if we could close a deal just above the yellow 21 exponential on the monthly, which is currently around 5,200, <laughs> albeit, uh, then I would get immediately bullish. I mean, that's, again, that's, that's what I used to use in traditional markets as a market maker authorized trade on the floor of New York Stock Exchange ARCA to judge if a stock of an equity was bullish or bearish. I mean, if we're above te technically bullish for, if, if we're below generally bearish and you see this, you see a very, uh, a very nice, respectful way that Bitcoin, uh, played around the yellow 21 exponential in the last market cycle in 2014, 2015, once we regained it right here, that was the perfect entry to an, uh, to an upside trend for the next three years. Um, so that's what I'd be looking for. But again, you know, looking at this area right here, I'm actually seeing some indications that the trend is strengthening to the downside, especially if we were to close, if we, if we close this, this monthly anywhere below, you know, 4,700, uh, these will cross and that's just going to intensify the selling, uh, most likely. Um, and then on top of that, the third and final and most important thing, although you're probably going to know beforehand, it's if Bitcoin can get back above the 6,000 area right here, the area breakdown, that's the most traditional way of doing it. Um, if Bitcoin gets back above 6,000, essentially, uh, zero reason to be bearish after that, um, from a technical amount standpoint. Anyways, I do see that Bitcoin is still, uh, still holding it up right now in the lower time frames, So not looking too bad. In fact, I forgot to put in an order on my other screen, I'm playing some options right now. And let's do something like this okay there we go all righty um so yeah uh as far as i'm concerned right here it does look like bitcoin wants to have a little bit of a bounce um just a very ugly flag but again it, this is what makes it so difficult it's a fucking weekend you know what can you expect on a weekend mm, usually flighty price action that is not not too good to make decisions off of now i will trade options on the weekend just because i'm much more confident trading options um i mean that's the beauty of options i can i, I can be wrong on spot direction and still make money i mean it's it's a fucking cheat code. <laughs> uh, you know, the people in the options program will know that. It's a fucking dense program. I mean, both those programs are 35 hours long plus. That's also why I say that. I mean, you have to be a special kind of person to be able to sit through 35 hours long as a video and probably multiple times as well um, for that. But hey... <laughs> <laughs> if you if you want to get the understanding, it's all in there. Um, but while we're here, yeah, it does look like we probably have a little bit of a bouncy bounce here. Probably bring it back up to about four, maybe test four thousand again. Uh, but all, all the things that happen between now and the end of day are of little significance to me. I, I need to see where the daily closes. I need to see where CME opens. So that's uh, that's infinitely more important. Um, okay, cool. So we spoke about that. Now let's get to some new stuff. So Willie Wu came out yesterday and, and Willie Wu is a person I really respect. I don't know him personally or anything like that. It sounds like I'm talking about him uh, as a friend. I don't know him. Um, but, uh, I'd love to have him on. He seems like a super cool person. Um, but, uh, he was going over some new charts that he's presented that show that the MVT signal is actually inaccurate, and it's inaccurate not because of liquid or or what's or, or lightning or anything like that. It's inaccurate because it's actually very easily gamed. Which I then went to one of my friends, shout out to JJ if he's listening right now, and he explained to me how it could be easily gamed by miners. Essentially, if you're not familiar with the MVT signal, it is a network value divided by the, the daily transaction value, and then and then you know interpret using a backwards 90-day uh, moving average. Um, but due to the miners, you know, differences in fees and whatnot, they can move Bitcoin a little bit more efficiently, which, you know, would kind of set that 
set that indicator off um, in the wrong direction. And then Willie will also expect, express his own concerns. So it's very interesting to hear that from people that, uh, pe uh, people that I really respect. So when it comes down to it, am I going to be using the MBT signal going forwards from here? No, I'm not going to for that fact. But does that change around my overall look on the ultimate low in Bitcoin? I'm not quite sure. Now, I'm going to go over to these charts that, that, uh, that Willie Wu had. This is a Bitcoin valuations chart, which I think is very important because you can see a few things here. You can see a few few things here if we can zoom in just a little bit and let's get the pan. There we go. Okay, so this this line right here, this kind of like light man, it's this is gonna be really difficult to see. Um, this line right here, which one does this represent? I can't quite get the uh, the 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 right read on this, but um, but this 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 line, <laughs> this special line, has actually governed the last lows of Bitcoin actually perfectly, actually perfectly. And if I could, I'm, my my eyes are a little bit tired right now, but I believe I'm looking at the Delta cap. Um, let me make sure that I actually have this correct, though. I, it'd be it'd be a shame if I got this one wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I believe I'm looking at the delta cap, which is just the difference between the average cap and the total mark cap, uh, I believe. And that has actually got gone the lows of Bitcoin perfectly. And you'll notice that the lows typically happen when all of the other lines, which is just a conglomeration of the mark cap, realized cap, MBT cap, all, all different, you know, uh, moving averages on the MBT cap, delta cap, average cap, top cap, inflow cap, fees cap. We won't explain that right now. If you want the full explanation, go to his website, woobull.com, and then check this out. It'll, it'll explain it all right here. Um, but when you see all of the other ones converge on the delta cap, that is where the lows have been put in. We have a perfect example right here. We have a perfect example right here. We, well, we actually have... Mm, that's not it's not really its own mark cycle to begin with um but right now you will notice that that delta cap is coming in where it's coming in actually down around here right around oh looks like i'm getting filled right now uh not so much um uh, right, uh, right around here which would put spot prices actually somewhere right around that 2500 mark but more importantly all of the other lines are actually not converging on it they're kind of divergent if you really look at it. Well, some are divergent, some are, uh, uh, you know, the very low ones are are converging, but the but the medium ones are actually diverging away from each other, which would probably be the most important to actually to be demonstrative of a major low. So to me, that is a big, uh, that is very interesting, as these are all fundamental indicators, you know, again, suggesting similar historical price action. And that has been the trend in the past, and that actually does, you know, make sense. You'd want to see all these things kind of converge so that every, everyone agrees, everyone has conviction, and then we can move on from there. That has been the trend in the past, but for right now, we don't really see that as of right now. Uh, not only that, but we go over here to the, to the Bitcoin price models, which is actually a little bit more of an easier, um, easier, easier seen one. You can see that same this same guy right here this is the delta cap yeah it's a delta cap and uh and it's kind of coming in right around where right around about yeah i'd say about 2500 and i think it's a little bit e easier seen here that's all of these other ones are nowhere near it and when you go back to the prior ones you want to see them converge you want to see them converge you know uh, the uh, th those were the past prior anyways more importantly or perhaps just as important enough if we zoom this out, you'll see that this top dotted line has actually governed the highs pretty much perfectly, uh, pretty much perfectly. And what is that? That is the top, <laughs> the top cap, which is just the average, the average market cap multiplied by 35, um, which just funnily enough has, has gotten the tops. Well, you'll notice that this area would be coming in somewhere around about $50,000 Bitcoin in, in the area of in 2020 ish area which is funny because if you've been following my long-term analysis videos we can actually come through a technical analysis way to be to to denote that that would be a potential high which would kind of align with this again different methods of getting there we'll get into it in a little bit later in the matrix um but this obviously you know it chugs along as time goes on right and uh and he hasn't really it, it doesn't look like he's really extrapolated this any forwards than that but you know the further and further that we've gone out we've seen that you know it can get to some pretty crazy numbers potentially 
Um, anyways, I thought that this was quite interesting. Um, we do see, by the way, this the this, this dotted pink line, which is the average cap, that is coming in right around 1,000. And I'll and this is one of the things that I why I don't believe that 1,000 is is very likely. We've actually never tested this. We've actually never tested this once. Or did we test it right here? Yes, we. Okay, maybe we did test it. Yeah, we did test it once in uh, in 2012. But other than that, Bitcoin's maintained pretty healthily above there. And the fact that it's coming in right around that 1,000 range, I think does diminish the case that, uh, that um, you know, that, that Bitcoin would have to go that low. My personal opinion is that if Bitcoin is going to bottom out, it's probably going to be somewhere around like, you know, low 2,000s, maybe high 1,000s, like 1869 um, low, like, like a quick, quick down there and then back up to like, you know, I don't know, 22, some back above 2000, something like that. It would it, have to be a nice move relatively quick, which we'll go over in a second. Um, but I thought that this was quite interesting as well. Let's go over here to something that I think is even more interesting than all these, which is, and, and I actually have a different, it's, it's funny because I'm going to sound like a completely arrogant fuck now. I'm going to have a different interpretation of this than the maker himself. But let me just explain. I think that I think that Willy Woo has actually misinterpreted this. He's interpreting this right now, I believe. Uh, and and feel free, Willy, if you're if you're listening out there, I have very lofty expectations. Um, if uh, if you disagree, but I believe that, uh, or, or or if I have this right, but I believe that Willy Woo is suggesting that this upwards momentum here actually indicates that the Bitcoin network momentum is now bottoming out, which has been a leading indicator in the past. You will see in the past market cycle that we were trending up before the ultimate breakout right here. Uh, the market cycle before that, we were trending up before the ultimate breakout right here. Well, I would actually argue something a little bit different. I would argue that the way to be looking at this is look at the past when you see this area right here you see like you see like kind of a base right you see a base and then when bitcoin goes in a bull market cycle right here as you see it maintains above this base and then once it goes into the bear market cycle it, it breaks this base and then it puts in you know your accumulation down here where it starts to gain momentum but as you can see it's gaining momentum for about a year between here and here while the price is actually going down so what we're seeing is divergence between the price and then this and then this indicator once bitcoin breaks above this area right here which is essentially the tops very important of this past bull market cycle right around here that is when perfectly and this is where I think it becomes a little bit more damning. This is, that's when it perfectly starts trending upwards and gaining momentum upwards right here, basically above the tops of your prior market cycle. Well, for me, I'd be looking at this and and I wouldn't really be looking at a, you know, if I'm looking at, at another fundamental indicator to be indicative of getting into a bullish market, I'd want to see actually this indicator get back above at least this area right here as that's when things got crazy, when it got above this first hump of the of the initial break of the prior breakout, while also gaining moment, you know, it's, it's obviously gonna be gaining momentum and probably creating divergence along the way. For right now, do we have divergence? Do we see divergence between um, between the oscillator and, uh, and price? We do, we do, but I don't believe, I, I, I believe that this can get a lot higher before we actually initiate something that is 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 more bullish in nature as far as the as far as the bigger picture goes so that's kind of my point is that i think he's being a little bit cavalier with stating that it is you know it's it's, it's already done I, what i think would be a little bit more safe to say is that we could very easily have another drop off but still maintain the momentum up and that actually just create more divergence which would create you know probably a better overall structure long term Anyways, I'm gonna get off this. Uh, I'm gonna get off this now. I thought that was quite interesting. But uh, sorry, just one more second while we're here. Um, oh my god, I've had the fucking. Sorry about that. I've had the fucking sale ticker on the whole time. Wow, completely fucked that up. Sorry about that. Anyways, <laughs> Jesus Christ, man, I do apologize about that. Anyways, um, while we're here, you know, if, if, if we could get back above this area, more importantly, that's when I'd start to say the momentum is actually on the side of a legitimate momentous move to the upside, which is where I, as a trader, want to be entering in positions, more importantly. 
Uh, I have no way to go back and edit that, by the way. <laughs> so apologies about that. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, that's... <laughs> can't even fucking remember to do it right. Oh, my God. Okay, all right. So let's get off that. Get off that. There we go. Uh, back on to Bitcoin right now. And um, yes, so I thought that that was quite interesting. Now, I'd also, to that effect, I'd like to go over why I still don't believe that Bitcoin is really bottomed. Um, on major market cycle lows, I want to see absolutely massive volume being thrown down. Uh, and historically speaking, the major volume that's been kind of shuffling Bitcoin around in the past um, in, in, in the past range was something akin to this, as we saw in February of 2018, 2019, or sorry, 2018. Uh, you do see that we've thrown down a major volume right here in early November, which people are looking at as capitulation. But I don't see it the same way because what I think a lot of people are getting wrong about this is that all this volume was thrown down on this major red dildo right here, which after that, we actually spent another one, two, three, f almost four weeks going lower before bouncing up. And if you're not familiar, and, and what I'm trying to get at here is that I think the people who state this perhaps misinterpret what actual capitulation is. Capitulation is when a major market mover, someone with, someone with extremely deep pockets, I'm talking you know hundreds of million dollars, maybe even billions, comes in and sets a floor in the market. How do they do that? Well, they essentially <laughs> they essentially wait for everyone to, to to become sellers, and then they and then they and then they buy up all the blood, and that's where all the volume comes from. It's actually buy it's it's technically buy volume as they bring up the price is, is typically how you want to see the more aggressive form of capitulation. So the fact that all this massive volume that people are looking at uh, is, is on this dildo right here, which, which was actually breaking the 200 exponential, so to me, a very momentous move, and then consolidation after that, that's kind of how I read that. Rather than this being you know, a capitulation, I'd want to see major volume being thrown down on this girthy green dildo right here, actually. That's what I want to see if it was actual capitulation. More importantly, this volume is not that high in uh historically speaking what i really want to see on an actual capitulation move if it is going to be the more violent reason uh, way is i want to see volume similar to what we did right here in 2018. why is that well again because i want to see a major market mover i want to see i want to see the signature of him entering into the market now a lot of people have been talking about otc recently it's become like a fucking meme as well uh otc volume will always show up in in exchange volume because first things first i mean where do you think i mean P these people don't like have magically they, they don't magically have bitcoins they're also going to be hedging on exchange against their own positions the brokers are going to be taking an insane risk with those sorts of ma major orders so they're going to be you know operating on exchange so by that way you know nothing operates in a vacuum and it's all it's all going to be pulled in together it's, it's never going to be too far off i mean it's also based off the underlying to begin with <laughs> so fair enough um but yeah you know i i want to see something similar to this Th this this has been where we actually do something really crazy you know the, 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 uh, this was an inflection point on the market when we throw down this much volume similar to how in 2014 2015 you see this volume over here on the ultimate low very similar to this volume over here on you know on your parabolic part uh very 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 similar well we uh this right over here not so similar to this over here in fact this over here in relation to this over here is much similar you know in in nature um, not only that, but if we put on the actual uh, Bitcoin dollar volume, we'll, we'll quickly notice that it's not even, it's it's really not even that much of what we're looking at over here anyways. Um, even if you were looking at this in, 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 in what I believe is incorrectly interpreting this as, you know, your capitulation, uh, it's nowhere near what uh, what we were doing you know, in, in 2017, 2018. I mean, that's, again, because the volume metrics is measured in coins traded, not dollars traded. So when you look at it versus the dollars traded, you can see very easily that's, it's nowhere near. I mean, you know, when price action is quite literally, you know, a fourth or a fifth of the price, it's technically speaking, you'd be, it'd be a lot easier to put on more coins, uh, more exposure. Um, but we don't see that. We don't see that just yet. But like I said, everything that, everything that I say now is to probably the end of this video is going to be more mental masturbation than than like you know more actionable analysis at the end of the day what i can boil it down to from the macro perspective is is as long as we're between the as long as we're above the 200 cent moving average don't be too damn bearish as long as we're below the 200 exponential moving average don't be too damn bullish it's that simple um but yeah Okay, so so more reasons why I don't believe that Bitcoin is bottomed. The reaction, the the reaction that Bitcoin's had off the lows as of current is not synonymous with how Bitcoin plays out its major market cycle lows from the past. In fact, 
if we look at this area right here and we take and we take a little bit of a measurement you'll notice that bitcoin's bitcoin's bounced up about what about 24 25 percent but over the course of about 18 weeks now let's actually count this one out uh one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen sorry seventeen working on eighteen um or will be working on eighteen by uh by 8 p.m eastern time tonight that's 25 percent again over the course of 18 weeks well Let's go look at a couple other times when Bitcoin has, has actually bottomed out and put in a major mark cycle low. Well, this this one right here in 2014, 2015, in just one week, one fucking week, Bitcoin bounced up 69%. And within two weeks, it actually had to wick up almost 100%. Um, that's the kind of reaction that I want to see coming off of a major mark cycle low. In fact, we have another example right here in uh, in 2018. If you were around in 2018 from the run down from 20,000 to 6,000, that last bit of the run was an example of what capitulation can look and feel like. Uh, all, 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 uh, you know, is obviously not the ultimate mark cycle low, but I would argue that what happened after that was a bubble in and of itself, which you know you can get from the MBT. Anyways, <laughs> which as I said before, I'm not I'm not sure how much I trust it anymore. Anyways, uh, if you look at the, um, it, you know, if you look at this dildo right here, in one week it did about fifty percent, or more than fifty percent. In the span of a couple weeks, it actually got up again a hundred percent off the lows. One week versus almost eighteen weeks. That's the difference in the reaction. Not only that, but Bitcoin's had a return back to the low. That's something that I really don't want to see, especially with with regards to traditional markets, where Bitcoin got within about five percent of its prior lows. Well, if we go over here to 2014, 2015, when Bitcoin put in its ultimate low, and this is what I'm really talking about, it never got within, I mean, this is, um, okay, it's not 52%. I've done this too many times to know that. It's uh, it's it's about 44.5% off the lows. I mean, th this was your wick down, and then after that, it maintained above this area. My point is, is that when a major market mover enters into the market to essentially set in the floor, they know that everyone else is going to know when they enter because their size is so fucking massive. You know, it shows up, their little whale footprints show up in the um, uh, in the volume metrics amongst other things. And this sort of this sort of low will be defended just by nature of that because everyone else is going to know and now they're buying in. So that entity also has an intrinsic motivation to defend their position and then we get something like this where we don't return really anywhere anywhere near the near the prior low we have the same thing right over here in this in this quick down where it got you know it uh sorry after that we never got within about 25 percent of the low pretty damn good and the time before that we don't really have an example for a time before that um so yeah, the fact that Bitcoin got within five percent of the prior low is very, 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 very concerning. You'd imagine that if someone, if someone big was stepping into the arena, they, they would be defending their position. Um, okay, so we talked about uh, we talked about volume, we talked about reaction, we talked about time. Uh, we haven't talked about time spent. Yeah, so time spent at the low. Uh, this is where it gets very, very hairy for me because historically, historically speaking, Bitcoin gives you about ten to. 10, 10 to 30 minutes to buy the to buy the low within like 5%, 5 to 10%. As you can see right here, Bitcoin spent one, two, three, four days at the low in, in this area, right around 3150 to 3200. 10 fuck or sorry, four four fucking days. Markets are not that generous in my experience, especially especially with Bitcoin's personality, which these principles are synonymous amongst all different trading assets from what I've noticed, whether it's, you know, equity options, which is where I come from, uh, Forex, commodities, and, and matching net money. The, the general principles for market cycles hold because we're typically dealing, I mean, we are dealing with humans or human psychology, which, you know, of course, you can say that it's also programmed by bots. Well, who programs the bots? Humans, right? So it's all governed by that factor. And we are essentially looking at a chart of human we're, we're looking at a chart of human irration irrationality. We're looking at a chart of human imperfectness. We're, we're looking at a chart of human emotions, essentially, at the end of the day, with kind of regards to Bitcoin. Um, so, yeah, you, you, you get a lot of these same uh, signatures, but big, and, then, and then the asset will have like its own personality. So this is kind of how Bitcoin's personality plays it out. Um, so we, so, you know, back over here on a, even on a daily, which we could put this on a fucking four hour, uh, and it's going to have a bigger bounce than the whole bounce over almost 18 weeks, uh, that Bitcoin's currently had. But in one day it did 30, you know, 32%. If we put it on a four hour, it's going to be, it's, it's, it's going to be insane. Uh, it's going to be like 25% I'd imagine. Let's, let's, let's do this one out. Let's go confirm this baby. Yeah, there you go. 
uh, one four hour dildo was actually 10% and then two four hour dildos was 20, 23%. So about as much as we'd balanced in, uh, in 18 weeks. Um, not only that, but if we go back to 2014, 2015, let's just scroll over there right now and let's see how this one played out, how fast this one, uh, let's see, it's going to take forever. Uh, okay. I think I found it. Yep. There it is. Alrighty. So Bitcoin bounces off of this area. In the span of a in the span of two four hour dildos, about thirty five percent. Now it does actually return back here for just a second. I mean, within about <clears throat> within about five to ten percent. But then by end of day, up about forty percent. You know, almost double the bounce that we've seen coming off the current lows. So again, um, as far as major market cycle low being uh, being put in, still not still not quite there from from what I look at. Not only that, but but let's actually pull up the historical volatility rank, which is incredibly useful in traditional markets. And in Bitcoin land, uh, I found some quite, I found a lot of use for it as well, actually. Uh, shout out to my man, Bali Poor, for putting this one together. I find more and more use every, each and every day. Anyways, uh, if you're not familiar with, with uh, volatility, it's essentially a mean reverting indicator that oscillates between 0 and 1. And it tells you about the average returns of price over, over a given amount of period of time, which probably doesn't make too much sense. Um, basically, if it, if it ticks a 1, it's telling you that the move is likely coming to an end. If it ticks a 0, it, it tells you that a move is likely to be again. <laughs> so looking at this area right here, coming off the low, you can see that we got all the way up to a 0.66, which is good, right? But it, it, I mean, it's kind of good. But if we scroll back in time, remember, this thing gets all the way up to 1. And now let's back test this. Let's back test this. Each and every time that it gets to a one, it doesn't tell you the direction. That's what technical analysis is for. But it does tell you, just checking out my CPU over there. Um, but it does tell you that it's, you know, it's, it's likely coming to an end. So when we do get to a one, we do see an, a major inflection point being put down right here at the low, at the 6,000 low. Again, an example of potential capitulation. On your blow off top, we were, we were signaling a one right here. On this low right here, that was signified by the by the historical volatility rank saying, hey, probably goodbye. Uh, same thing with this low right here. Same thing with this high right here, good sell. Same thing with this low right here, goodbye. Same thing with this low right here, goodbye. Uh, same thing with this um, high right here, good sell, you know, for a nice, for a nice trade. Uh, and then obviously on the, on the former market cycle low, well, we were, we were printing all the way up to into the one. I mean, it was, it was, it was as high as it can get right on the low. Let's go, let's, let's back test it a little bit more. Um, oh, we, I mean, we need to go to BLX index. Um, <clears throat> oh, I, th I think we got everything. <laughs> My bad. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, that, that's, that's as far back as it goes. Anyways, um, you know, that has been perfect. It, it has been perfect and still not signaling a low for what we're looking at right now. Does that not mean though that Bitcoin can't rally from this area? No, of course not. Of course, Bitcoin can, can put in a rally in a bear market. It can put in a dump in a bull market. I mean, we saw some pretty intense dumps uh, on the way up, right? Uh, all these ones down to the 200 exponential were incredibly powerful. Uh, very, very scary to live through it uh, firsthand. Um, so yes, we've spoken about time spent at the low. We, we spoke about the volume. We, t we spoke about the dollar volume. We spoke about the reaction. We spoke about the historical volatility rank. Um, I would also add in the Bitcoin momentum chart that we looked at on, on Wubull. And uh, what else can we look at? Let's look at the longs and shorts right now. Longs and shorts is still in favor of the longs, but very they're extremely close right now. This is this is becoming a moot point. I don't think that I'm, I'm I, I won't be talking about this. Um, <clears throat> or I don't put as much weight on this because we're just not seeing the reaction that I'd expect to see with these two underlying market dynamics diametrically opposed. Uh, when there's a severe imbalance between the two, that was really the chance for the bears to p to pile on positions. Instead, the bears are really taking their time right now. In fact, a lot, a lot getting liquidated over the last couple of days. Um, but more importantly, each and every time that the shorts have gone into this red box territory, which is essentially the area anywhere below about 20,000 open shorts that has, you know, marked major, major dumps. Uh, this was your double top at 12,000 in February last year. This was your top at May in 10, at 10,000 uh, last year. This was your top at 8,400 in August last year. This was your top at, you know, 63 before moving down to 3,000 last year. And uh, once again, we found ourselves in this way. And when shorts started to gain more momentum getting out of this area, we just didn't see them take control. You can see in the past that once they kind of accelerated out of this, out of this area, it was just, it, it was no questions asked, just straight fucking up. People are putting on their shorts and they're running it. Right now, we don't see that. We see hesitation. And we, see, yes, there there are more longs and shorts on the table right now, but for all intents and purposes, they're about equal. 
Um, and neither one, neither one is necessarily under pressure right now. I'd imagine that the people, you know, the the the, the over leverage shorts got liquidated, and now the longs are t- well, they take profit yesterday, uh, but the longs extremely low as well. Historically speaking, you know, this this is the this is the pay, this is the place where major pumps have emerged from as well. So I do want to be balanced with the way that I present that, but uh, is switching around. Uh, more importantly, perhaps uh, the crypto fear and greed index, fear and greed index, is actually taken back up to a greedy um, a greedy moniker at 58. Uh, you know, each and every time that, that this thing's gotten above a, whoops, let's go a little bit lower. How about that? Cash me outside. Um, <laughs> so each and every time that it's gotten above the 50 marker, which I'll put my curse currently on right now is, is this area right here. The, that, that has marked tops again, this, you know, the same tops that we just spoke about, uh, double top at 12,000 in February, top at, uh, 10,000 in May, top at, uh, 8,400 in, in August, top at, uh, 74 in, in Sept, uh, top at 63 in November before moving down to 3,000. And then once again, we've, we found ourselves in this way. So people are getting very, you know, uh, greedy again, I suppose op- optimistic is a better word because greedy doesn't really make too much sense. And, you know, I mean, maybe it does, but people are getting more optimistic while Bitcoin, again, is not taking out any of the major macro areas that we just spoke about. So that is the great concern there. Anyways, um, with all that said, let's talk about what happens if Bitcoin were to break down it with keep, keeping this in mind that um, this is really only appropriate to talk about as a trader, as a trader, if Bitcoin breaks the pink 200 symbol moon average right here at 3,400. If Bitcoin breaks the uh, the 3,400 region, I would be looking for a quick dump to about 2,500. And when I say quick, again, I need to make sure that you know, it's it, it's relevant to the time frame. So quick on a weekly time frame is going to be you know over the course of I don't know maybe even a couple of weeks. I mean we had a, we had a very quick dump from six thousand to three thousand, but that really happened over the course of one, two, three, four, five, six weeks before it re- before it reached its current low. Um, so yeah. Anyways, uh, if we were to break the two hundred x uh, the two hundred simple at uh, thirty four, I would be looking for a move down to this blue box territory between twenty three hundred and twenty six hundred, which is also the eighty six foot non retracement as you can see, which is actually where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014, 2015. You do see some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around this area as well. If we put down the volume profile, you will notice that the volume profile some 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 nice high high value notes coming around this area, and also actually I will I will show another thing today um, that the Trollinger bands which we looked at on the weekly earlier, uh, if this does turn into a rejection at the 20 simple, the skid mark, the median band, or the median the median movement average, which again, just 20 simple movement average, well, that typically incites a test of the lower band, the lower Trollinger band. Where is that going to be coming in around? 2300. Um, so again, just multiple things kind of uh, suggesting that area if we were to break down and get fully confirmed down. Anyways, I'm going to get off the uh, the, troller, the trollers right now and put, put, back, these, put, put back on these babies. And uh, let's go over here to the monthly... Uh, monthly also shows, you know, that uh, that would be the next step um, if we were to break down as well is 2400, 2500, right around the cyan 89 exponential. And of course, we go to the weekly, you'll see the 377 exponential right around that range as well, a little bit higher at around 2700, actually, uh, which would be of great importance. So that's what I'd be looking for towards if Bitcoin were to break down. Are there lower targets than that? Yes, there are. But as we spoke about before, you know, judging major market cycle lows is not necessarily about, you know, judging it beforehand. I want to see the reaction first, just like when Bitcoin came down to this first area right here at uh, thir- uh, at 3000. I treated it as a potential low until I saw the full on reaction, which told me that this is not the doings likely unlikely the doings of a major market cycle mover um, who can, you know, set set set, or set a floor. It, does, it just doesn't look like someone's setting a floor in looks like a looks like a massive consolidation which we're seeing unravel um <clears throat> so the same you know the same thing goes if we were to hit the next level i need to see the reaction but potential bottoming area uh, below that i'd see about 1869 then below that you know i, I guess i joined the perma bearers below you know around 1000 uh but like i said take it you know i take it one one step at a time and more importantly i'm looking for the reaction not just saying it's blindly going here no matter what uh no questions asked Okay, cool. Um, all right, so we spoke about all that. Okay, let's get into the matrix now, uh, and this is going to have some conflicts with with what Willy Woo was doing, but uh, different different methods. So, and again, I always want to preface these conversations by saying, hey. 
don't I don't put too much weight on this. I don't make trades based off this, but it is fun mental masturbation. You know, mental masturbation bad for blue brains, but also good for <laughs> talking amongst your friends on Discord. <laughs> uh, so these all, all, all these dotted trend lines represent a trend line, a support trend line from a parabolic market cycle in Bitcoin's history. This first one going on in 2010 and 2011 anchors. It was broken in 2012 right here, and then that became the highs, the governing factor of our 2013 and 2014 market cycle right here. Then we created another support trend line for that next market cycle uh, anchored right here in 2011 and right here in 2013, which was broken in 2015 right here. And that became the highs of our next market cycle in 2017, 2018, or sorry, yeah, 2017, 2018. Then we created another support trend line for, uh, for, uh, for this cycle anchored right here in 2015 and 2016. And that was broken on the drop down below 4,000 below that critical 200 exponential on the weekly. And does that become our governing factor going forwards here? Can we come, can we come up with a way forwards now? Perhaps. And let's just see, um, you know, at the end of, uh, at, uh, at, at the end of, or sorry, beginning of 2020, where the potential high be, you know, 14 and a quarter, 14,000 and a quarter. Uh, if we, if we move that out just one more year to, um, to, to 2021, I mean, that's, that's, that's all the way at 50,000. Now, if we go all the way to 2023, now we're, I mean, technically 200,000. Do I believe that Bitcoin's going to, to 200,000 by 2023? No, this is a potential high, um, which if we top up beforehand, I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's going to start the cycle over again. Right. Anyways, uh, that's what I thought is worth mentioning. Um, as he actually had that same area in uh, around that same time frame, I believe, uh, if we go out like, you know, super far, you can see where, you can see where like a John McCaffey starts getting his numbers at like a million for 2025. Do I think that that's likely? Not really. Um, but I do think that Bitcoin get into the, uh, into the deep five digits. Uh, I do think that that's possible. Anyways, more importantly, while we are here, I do want to denote and talk about these solid trend lines that you see uh, from the past market cycle in 2014, 2015, and this market cycle that we're doing in right now. And yes, you could make this for the prior market cycle as well, but we don't have so much time, you know, <laughs> and I'm fucking hungry. Um, but more importantly, you know, looking at this area, this first solid trend line uh, held in that first consolidation coming off the parabolic bull off top. And more importantly, when we zoom in, you can see that once it broke out, that's when it put in the bull trap of that segment. And when it broke down, it never broke back below that first solid trend line again, uh, based off of it once and then off of it twice for its final low. Can we make the same thing on 2018? Actually, we can. This whole this whole part is your consolidation, breakout, bull trap right here in 2018. And then where have we come down and based off of on the way down? Well, that first trend line, that first solid trend line, catching it right, right alongside the 200 simple. And if we could follow that down, you know, we could actually come up with potential dates, uh, di um, you know, dates for these uh uh, f um, f uh, for these targets, you know, if you're looking at that 1800 level, maybe it comes in around, you know, late April. Uh, if you're looking at the 1000 level, maybe it comes around, you know, mid June next year, or sorry, this year, um, or July, sorry, I guess it is July. Uh, but overall, you know, my point is that I would be looking for this to act as support on the way down. And, uh, and, and the more time that Bitcoin goes sideways here, the more and more that this actually is allowed to go down. Now, by the same token, this next, this next uh, solid trend line that you see right here that governs that bull trap actually is very important as well because when Bitcoin breaks out above it, that's when your bull market starts. I mean, that's actually the perfect entry right here. I mean, you literally enter on the first major spike. It never goes lower, bro. Well, looking at 20, uh, 2019 right now, if we were to break this area, where is it coming in around? 4350, 4400. 4300, which would actually have great confluences with the uh, with the yellow 21 exponential, which I put a lot of weight on on the weekly, um, and also kind of the 200 exponential on the, on the weekly as well. So, again, I am you know I would be overall bearish even as long as we're below this from a from a tertiary standpoint. Um, and more importantly, you know if you know if we did break out above it, would I immediately be bullish? I I suppose it'd be my first initial indication, uh, not this thing that I put the most weight on, but if we could actually, you know, both open and close above the weekly 21, that would, that'd be pretty significant. Uh, more importantly, if we were to follow this all the way down, you know, you can kind of see potential timings for when it might turn around as well, you know, depending upon where it, where it actually bottoms. So, 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 so now let's get on over and talk about, let's actually talk about something that, I, that, uh, um, that I've never talked about before. I'm going to put on a couple of different moving averages uh, on my SMAs. I'm going to put on a uh, 100 and a 300. And this is interesting to me as uh, let's put, I'm going to take off all of the EMAs. Okay, let's do this. 
There you go. And take off that. So we're going to be using the purple 200 or sorry, the pink 200 simple, the yellow uh, 100 and the blue 300, I believe. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. So there was, um, I forget, I, I want to give credit to the person who, who, who threw this my way, but, uh, but there's been some analysis done su suggesting that Bitcoin essentially just walks its way up, uh, um, you know, on top of all of the, uh, for, sorry, how do I explain this for each and every mark cycle, Bitcoin essentially walks up on just one degree higher of the simple moving averages, which actually after back testing kind of makes a little bit of sense. Let's actually put in one more. Um, I forgot to do this. Apes, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> that was strange. Um, let's go. Let's put the red at a 50. And then let's put them on right there. Okay, cool. Okay, so you'll notice this. You'll notice this. That uh, this this first red one, mm, I guess it doesn't go all the way down. I'd like to see it actually act as support for, for all the way down right here. And in fact, the more that I look at it, mm, we could, no, let's keep it here for a second. All right, so the yellow is the 100, and you can see that that is pretty much where Bitcoin did bottom out in 20, uh, 2012 market cycle, if you were to extrapolate a little bit forwards down. Uh, by the same token, you can see that this 50, you know, if you extrapolated it, it was, you know, it's kind of getting this area right here. But for the next market cycle, we move up one more. It's the 200 some moon average right here, the pink moon average that Bitcoin actually found support along. So the idea is that, well, if the 200 some moving average held it up, if, if the if the 50 moving average held it up on this first area here, and then the 100 uh, simple moving average held it up on the second area right here, and then the 200 uh, simple moving average held it up on this next cycle right here, does a 300 hold it up on the next cycle? Well, that would be coming in right around 2400, 2500. So it would align, you know, with all the other areas that I was speaking about. Do I put that much weight on something like this? I mean, it sounds kind of silly when I explain it like that, to be honest with you. Um, we do, I do see some things, so, some things of interest right now, though. You do see the 10, you, sorry, you do see the 50 cross on the downside of the 100 right now on the weekly. We saw that in 2014, which actually did put a lot of downwards pressure on price action, but Bitcoin had already bottomed out beforehand. And more importantly, when they cross back up to the upside, that's, you know, uh, that, uh, that was a nice, uh, that, uh, that was a nice bull indication, I would say, uh, definitely a very nice bull indication. Anyways, um, I'm going to take this, uh, make, making sure my other screen's all right. Getting, get, keeping it safe in Safu. Um, so, you know, when, when looking at it, this, when looking at this area right here, are we seeing something similar to what we saw right over here? Perhaps, perhaps. Um, although I would argue this is not the way I'd be looking at it. Let's look at, um, let's look at week weekly RSI because there are a few things to be aware of right now. Weekly RSI is traveling up significantly higher. Price action has failed to break out of any of the critical areas. Let's actually put back on the exponentials. <sighs> yeah, I feel kind of silly even talking about that. Um, <laughs> it did a 50 right here, then a 100 right here, and then a 200 right there. I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense, but um, yeah. All right, there we go. Do we have that? Okay, yes. Okay, we got everything. So we have RSI essentially traveling higher, while price action is, for, for all intents and purposes, on a weekly flat. We have not taken out any of the critical resistances on a weekly. Of course, on the lower time frames, yes, action has happened, um, but a weekly, not so much. And with that, I would actually say that this is a very bearish RSI setup because essentially the RSI is, I mean, you know, true RSI believers will tell you that this is essentially resetting itself is what it's called while price action is flat coming off of a major downtrend consolidating. It's just allowing the RSI to get up a little bit higher, getting ready for a next drop. Um, so I did want to get that in there. <clears throat> after talking about some nonsense it's, it's not so it's not so nonsense i need i need to go back and do my due diligence and see what that guy was really trying to say because it, it, you know that you can see that there's a little bit of merit to it but it's i want to see more man i want to see more all righty um what else do we have uh while we're here on the weekly let's check out the weekly stokes weekly stokes have been unable to get above the 40 marker basically the the edge of the bearish control zone for the last you know the last year since may of 2018 or sorry perhaps uh february of, of last year so a little bit over a year we're going to be approaching that area on the next tick so does that still hold it do we remain in the bearish control zone for the stokes well looking similar to the i mean i'd have a similar read to the stokes as it would on the on the rsi both are kind of setting up you know, for more bearish, uh, you know, more bearish interpretation, as long as, as long as Bitcoin is not taken out, you know, one of these major resistances, whether it's on, you know, on a weekly perspective, on a two week, on a biweekly or a monthly, uh, I'm still very hesitant. That would be my first, my first interpretation until that, that is all confirmed. Now, of course the monthlies, you know, 
It's going to take another couple of weeks to confirm. Two week, two week could confirm today, though. Bi weekly could confirm today. Um, okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. We spoke about all that. Man, we've spoken about so much now. Um, yeah, let's go check out the other top shit coins. Mr. Buterol right now. Uh, Mr. Buterol, you can see same sort of range, actually. Uh, using the 10 symbol to rally off of on the weekly uh, major resistance right around 162. Um, here's how the daily looks, however. Uh, daily did take out the 89 to the upside, but I believe did we get st we got stopped right at this critical resistance right here, 144. Um, but again, it's it's going to fall whatever the major the other majors do. Mr. Butero is certainly the weakest of the bunch, however. Um, what else do we have to say about that? Uh, other than that, I don't see any glaring issues with it. It does look like a I, I'd want to see, if I'm going to remain bullish on it, I need to see it hold 138. I do not want to see it break 138 to the downside. Uh, but I would, you know, because of the other, because the other ones are showing strength, I would say that Mr. Buterall probably, you know, probably deserves a little bit of a uh, little bit of respect. But the overall picture, again, is still that of a rising channel on, on the longer time frames, and uh, likely consolidation as verified by the volume signature. Let's go over to Mrs. Litecoin. She's been the one. She's been the one to watch. And Mrs. Litecoin still within the context of this of this ascending broadening wedge, which is typically a bearishly bearishly resolved pattern. You even see the volumes the volume signature get uh, get a little even a little bit more mature for this. And as soon as you know when this thing gets lower and lower, as volume just starts to die out, it becomes more and more likely to actually you know have that move. Uh, now, of course, if Mrs. Litecoin does break above sixty three and a half dollars and break the three seven seventy the upside, I think that you know, this, this sunny broadening wedge is going to be one of the ones that actually breaks out to the upside. But for now, you know, this, you know, statistically speaking, it's more likely to break out to the downside. I know people are, are talking about a golden dildo cross on, uh, on Mrs. Litecoin. I, um, I, I don't really care about simple moving average crosses. I know that they do hold a little bit of weight, of course, but I, I, I find them imprecise. And a lot of the times you'll get, uh, you'll get like a fake out on the first one or two. Um, it's not until I see the, the daily, which is getting closer. It's still going to take about another week. Um, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, but it, it's getting pretty close. If we could actually get that, that would be a pretty strong indication. I would not be, want to be bearish after that. That's that. That means a significant amount more to me. Um, but uh, if you know, if Mick, if Mrs. Litecoin did come back down and test supports, we got support now at 57 and a half. That area was taken out last night. It looks like. Yeah, sorry, a couple days ago. Uh, so I would I would be looking for it to be uh, to uh, to be likely retested, but also defended. If that area does fail, the next support right around here, right around fifty six dollars. And uh, if that area breaks, then 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 it starts to be a little bit more interesting. All the way down to about fifty two and a half dollars. If fifty two and a half dollars breaks, then this ascending broadening wedge will be considered broken to the downside, and that would initiate a measure move probably down around here to about forty four and a half. But of course, as you can see right now, you know it's it's looking okay. I'm curious what the daily also to say. Daily RSI will be printing divergence if it does top here. It's it'll still have one, two, three drives with a little bit of a fake out on a weekend. Uh, but this is going to be completely dependent upon whether it confirms a local high here or not. Daily Stokes looks fine. Daily Stokes looks like it wants to take another leg actually. Um, but because it is in a bearish formation, because you know, because because the the structure and volume is suggesting that, I would be you know, I'd rather be safe than sorry, especially below a major resistance like this at sixty-three and a half dollars, or yeah, about sixty-three and a half dollars right here. If Mrs. Litecoin does break above sixty-three and a half dollars, would be looking towards uh, sixty-nine bucks actually, actually sixty-nine dollars. Um, so again, Mrs. Litecoin, the independent strong woman who don't who don't need no Bitcoin in this uh, in this cryptocurrency land, rallying up and doing her own thing, and actually quite independent. Um, let's go check out the other tops. Uh, let's see, BNB. BNB actually quite strong as well in breaking oh uh, breaking above that uh that ascending triangle that we that we drew in yesterday looks like we've perfectly come back and retested this uh, uh just a little bit of time ago and as long as we're above this area as long as we're above uh, fifteen dollars and forty cents I do respect that but looking at the volume right here this is why I hate trading on weekends look at the volume this looks I mean it looks like a trap there's no volume on, I want to see volume as akin to this what we did over here. Uh, if we're going to break out of this formation, otherwise it's just going to morph into something like this where it becomes a rising wedge, right? And that's actually looking a lot more likely looking at the volume signature. Uh, I, I, I think that this probably is going to morph into a rising wedge. Uh, that's very lackluster and does signify, you know, be careful. Uh, what does the daily look like? Uh, daily also sort of is stokes are still up, but they're they're very mature. Daily RSI is giving one, two, three drives of bearish divergence. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd be careful here. Yes, support is right around uh, fourteen dollars and eighty cents, I, I believe. If no, no, it's higher than that. It is uh, fourteen dollars and ninety ninety five cents. If fourteen dollars and ninety five cents does fail, I would be looking for a move down to about fourteen dollars even. 
um, and if fourteen dollars even breaks, and that's when you know that's when the party gets a little bit more intense. Uh, so I'd be looking for a full on move down to about twelve eighty, and then perhaps even uh, eleven eighty uh, beyond that. But for now, you know, could you still interpret it as such as this? Could it's 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 all the same, right? If we do break below fifteen dollars and thirty five cents, you could say that uh, then this then this then this whether you call it a wedge or a failed breakout of an ascending triangle, and this is how you kind of see these patterns morph around. Uh, you know, likely going to have the same you know the, the, the same target right here at around fourteen dollars seventy cents, and then like we said, four you know about fourteen dollars ten cents, fourteen dollars even after that essentially. Let's go look at a Z cash. It's the real B cash. Did he break out? I believe that he actually did. Yeah, did did force his head above here, but again, look at the volume. That yes, this is a descending triangle, which is typically a more bearishly resolved pattern. I've seen every pattern break out every goddamn which way. Uh, but looking at the volume, this is very, 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 very suspect. Uh, yes, it did it did technically close above, and lower time frames look okay. But if I'm just looking at the volume, I'd be very concerned. Uh, all medium time frames are cooling down right now. We got daily Stokes getting getting very mature. We got daily RSI printing a little bit of divergence as well. Nope, sorry, no divergence. Um, yeah, no divergence here. Uh, B cash. Uh, what do we have on B cash poking his head above as well, uh, finding finding the next level, the 89 exponential, as we said, was uh, was likely, and uh, likely coming back and retesting this area. I want to see it act as support though. Again, a very 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 lackluster breakout on on extremely low volume does make me. I mean, yes, we. I mean, we already hit the move that that we were looking for. <sighs> Does it bounce off the support? Is the real question. So it needs to maintain 140 and a half. Uh, Tron Cash. What's Tron Cash doing? I think I was pretty neutral on it last time, and still would be neutral on it. Uh, as long as you're below two and a half cent, I would be overall bearish on it. But uh, as long as you're above 2.18 cent, I wouldn't be too bearish on it. Uh, it's going to take a lot to break this. I'd imagine. Um, but we do we do see daily stokes up, and we do see some hidden bearish divergence actually going down on this baby, uh, Mr. Tron Cash, between this point and this point, and actually having some trending uh, uh, some, our, our, our trending indicators su suggesting that the trend is strengthening to the downside. Uh, Neo Cash, what's Neo Cash doing? Did close above that same that uh, that same resistance that we looked at in the other majors as well, but in the overall context of still a greater um, uh, rising uh, channel. And as you can see, a lot of selling on that last wick. But so far, this area has been defended. As long as Mr. Neo is closing, you know, is maintaining this nine dollar forty cent region, give it the benefit of the doubt. EOS Cash, I'm gonna guess is probably very similar. Um, nope, actually a little bit weaker than than the other ones. Still using the two hundred simple as resistance at three dollars ninety four and a half cents. As long as we're below there, I wouldn't be too damn bullish on it. Uh, but as long as we're as long as we're above three dollars sixty cents, wouldn't be too damn bearish on it. It is in the context of a rising channel, as you know, as as all the other majors are. If we do break three dollars six cents to the downside, we'd be looking towards uh, three dollars thirty five cent. Um, let's go check out, let's go free the nipple. How's Mr. Nipples doing? Actually, the Bitcoin parent is falling off a cliff, uh, but Mr. Nipple is actually closing above, uh, opening and closing above this, this trend line, the, the, the descending trend line, sorry, the descending tri triangle uh, resistance trend line uh, yesterday, but again, extremely low volume down here. I mean, this is very, 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 very suspect. I would be extremely, um, I'd be extremely defensive if it, you know, if I saw Mr. Ripple's uh, nipples, get shoved back down below, you know, even three, uh, 31.3 cent, I, I would be, I'd be defensive off that. I would interpret that as, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's too close for comfort. Uh, all this done on a week weekend does make me, uh, skeptical, but Hey, as long as it maintains that I would, you know, I would be looking for that 33 and a half cent region. Um, Mr. Monero finding resistance right at the top side of this, uh, of, of this trend line going all the way back from late December of 2018. Uh, so again, not, not too much to say here, just finding resistance along the ultimate resistance of this area. I'm still filling out this overall consolidation, which people are going to tell you that this is an ascending triangle. Ascending triangles are bullish continuation patterns, not, <laughs> not bottoming formations. Um, but, uh, but more importantly, you know, if we, if we could actually, you know, close above about $55, I would be looking for a move over all the way to about 64 and a half. But for now, still being be held in below there. Uh, support would be right around a little bit below 52 bucks. Stellar Cash, what's Stellar Cash doing? Still being still being held below eleven cents, but really maintaining this area quite well, uh, using the using the eighty nine as support as you can see, but uh, but very obviously the resistance that is is right here at around ten point nine cent, uh, and this one also kind of forming its own ascending broadening wedge, which we've seen you know is kind of like a flavor of the overall market. 
all bearish, you know, you know, be, uh, bearish patterns doesn't mean that it, can't, it, it won't, it can't break out to the upside. I've seen it happen before, but need, you know, needs to start closing dailies above about 11 cents for that to be a little bit more, you know, a, a, a little bit more readily available. And then I'll be looking for a run towards about 12 and a half to 13 cents, which actually would initiate a retest of this overall trend line, which Mr. Stellar was using for the past over a year, um, which broke in December. And then if, you know, we retested it once rejected, I would imagine if we, if we retested it again, it'd probably sell off. Um, but Hey, you know, that's well and far away. It needs, needs to clear 11 cents first. As long as this resistance is holding, actually look at this as, as a potential topping area. Uh, look at the Stokes getting very mature up here. Look at the RSI signaling some bearish divergence as well. Sorry, we do not have bearish divergence. I apologize. That uh, uh, that uh, that is incorrect. We do have some good trending uh, trending indicators going on to the upside right there. Yellow twenty one and the green fifty five. But lower time frames are going to be uh, posting significant bearish divergence. Uh, I believe all the way up to an eight hour, perhaps. Yeah, eight hours going to have it. 10 hours going to have it as well. So uh, I, I would be looking for a pullback in general to about low 10 cent region regardless. Um, if it breaks below there, I'd be looking towards a little bit below 10 cents at 9.8 cent. And then, you know, the critical area that needs to hold is about nine and a half cents. As long as it's above nine and a half cents, I am respectful of it, but uh, don't, I wouldn't be too respectful of it. Um, anyways, okay. So, so we'll end this, we'll, we, we will end this with Bitcoin now. Uh, again, a very, 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 very long video. I hope you found this one well, but uh, let's let's uh, let's discuss the lower time frames. Uh, ten hours actually getting it pretty damn well, although ten hour stokes are about to turn around on probably in the next tick. Uh, we do have some uh, no bearish divergence here, but overall, as long as Bitcoin defends the thirty nine hundred to thirty nine thirty hundred uh, thirty nine thirty, as long as thirty nine thirty nine thirty to thirty nine hundred is 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 defended, especially by end of day, I would not be bearish. Even though, yes, we are hitting some resistances. Yes, we are in the thickness of all of the macro areas as a trader, from a trader's perspective, uh, on the lower time frames. I do not want to be bearish um, in, unless if like 3,900 breaks or, or may, maybe 3,930 on a lower time frame, you know, if you wanted to front run it. And it's not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, just sharing, you know, how to kind of be trading these exact sort of same situations. Uh, for anyone wondering, I actually did end up scalping away most of my position yesterday above 3,980. Uh, not a huge position or anything like that. Um, I hold I hold a very small portion uh, right now, an extremely small portion, but I do hold some uh, long still from about 39.45, so I'm just barely in the green. But if this does go below 39.30, or, or especially if it breaks 3900 on a daily, I would be absolutely out and probably be looking on looking to put on a real short. Again, that is confluence with the CME's highs. That is confluence with GBC. That is confluence with Bitcoin daily 89. That is confluence with, with Bitcoin 236 Fibonacci retracement on this overall consolidation. That's conf, that's confluence with the weekly uh, Trollinger bands. That is confluence with the biweekly uh, to, um, 10 simple. That is confluence with the monthly 50 exponential, which all are coming in as resistance is right around that 3,900 level. So while Bitcoin is above it on a weekend, on a Sunday, I respect it, but I'm also very quick to change it around because I don't want to be caught in something like that, uh, uh, um, something that we saw about a couple Sundays ago right here. Because again, remember, you know, price action is very easy to, I don't want to use, I don't want to use the word, I don't want to use the word, but price action is very easy to perform hunts and uh, enforce people out of their positions especially the over leveraged players um, on the weekends because there's less people trading. So, you know, it doesn't take as much money to run the markets up and down and get this very, uh, this very <laughs> nasty price action. So again, uh, more preliminary resistance around 4,000. Um, uh, that's a 12 hour, 200 exponential, two day, uh, 50 exponential, which is so far style of price action. If we do break above 4,000, I would be looking for that move to about 4,150, maybe 4,200 back, back around this prior high, uh, which I certainly would not still, I, I would not put that out of the question still, you know, that would be my target if Bitcoin maintains and closes today's daily total above 3,900. And I can say that a little bit more aggressively as long as we close the daily above, I mean, at least 3,900. 39.30. If we can close the daily above 39.30, I would be looking towards that uh, a retest right around that region. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. I hope this one finds you well. I'll be back on tomorrow with some more live stream and video uh, updates. Looking forward to see you there. As always, want to be wishing you well. Want to be wishing you the best of the best over here from actually very bright and sunny um, Helsinki. A little bit of an early morning, as I said, so brain's moving slowly. Apologies about the <laughs> about leaving the the, the sale thing on there. Uh, annoying, I know. But, uh, but yeah. I will, I, I uploaded a new video into the uh, trading psychology series. Also the options tutorial, uh, beginner tutorial series is completely finished now. 
Um, and I am actually working on a few more things. So with that said, I'll be signing off now and take care.